me, the, the genesis where MSB comes from is that with an enormous amount of uh, knowledge and experience uh, developing high-end and, and top uh, digital products in the past, they developed their own brand name and started eight, nine years ago really making MSB products. And if I see at the progress that was made from the beginning um, with the link tag and looking now at the reference tag and the select, there are no other companies that made such progress in, the, in such a short time. And that's because of experience and the dynamics inside a, a young company being 20, more than 25 years old experience, but due to the, the young energy from jo Jonathan and Daniel taking uh, over the company, it, it gives an enormous uh, enthusiasm and passion for what they are doing. And uh, they're pushing the limits. And that is something that I find extraordinary and makes me very hopeful for the future. I think uh, MSP separates itself from other high-end audio digital brands because we, we do everything in-house and we are one of the only ones, I think we're the only one, making the ladder decks and pushing the digital limits at this level. Being a musician myself, I know how music instrument sounds, I play music myself, and MSP is the one that comes closest to reality for me. And that's the, the biggest difference. I think what MSB is doing is art. Uh, at this level, everything has to be uh, perfect. And to get to that level, um, for me, that is art in knowing what you're doing. It's art in engineering, uh, looking to every detail, going from the input modules to the outputs, the, the way the products look, uh, uniformity in, in manufacturing, uh, taking care of all the details and making exceptional products. And that is, for me, that's art. That's not just technology. Technology is, is only a vehicle to get to a result. And if you're reproducing art like music is, you have to do the same excellence in your manufacturing. What I love about this industry is that the people that I know, um, they, they care for what they're doing. They love what they're doing. It's their passion. Um, honestly, what I don't love is people trying to be cheap and not respecting the level of effort that's made it. It's like some people are just buying because they can get a discount. And for me, that's the same as if you're, if you're working for a boss at the end of the month, he would say, oh, I'm gonna get a 20% discount on your paycheck because I think I don't wanna pay you that much. I don't think you're worth it. And I, I find that offensive that people do not respect uh, the people that are working for them, shop owners, distributors, manufacturers, and they're just trying to cut down because they're like, oh, these are only $3 components. It's not about these components. It's the whole chain of manufacturing, uh, taking care of everything and, and presenting it to a customer that's, that you're trying to cut down. And that's, I find that disappointing. It's the same as stealing music from an artist instead of paying for a CD. It's, that is something I don't understand. Understanding what happens in digital products is fighting noise. And to understand where noise can come from and affect the performance of digital equipment, you have to really think through the whole system from connecting a router 
and a noisy power supply behind your fantastic power conditioner, you're putting the noise behind the power conditioner and it's again in your system. So you really have to think the whole nine yards, the every step in your system to lower the noise floor, look for grounding, um, reduce noise and, and that is so complicated in setting up a turntable is an art. It's, it's not, it's, it's also difficult. But once it's done, if there is a hum, you know, oh, if there is some ground loop and you fix it and it's done. But with digital, it can come from everywhere and it affects your system. And uh, I think to do a proper setup, you need to be an expert in what you do. I think it's the choice of what a music lover wants. If he likes vinyl, he'll play vinyl. And next to that, I think you can have a fantastic digital setup performing at the same level and uh, having the comfort of just taking your iPad, selecting a song, and listening to what you want. Um, it's a good exercise getting up every 25 minutes to take off the album, turn it around, clean it, prepare it. I mean, it's, it's a different, it's a different handling. You're, you're handling a material, the vinyl, you're caring for it, where a digital file is something you cannot grab. You can just take your iPad, look at the cover, select the track. So there is, for me, that's a different emotion. Um, but performance-wise, I prefer the digital part. It's, it's just so fantastic what is possible with the MSB products. And uh, in terms of dynamics, detail, resolution, the soundstage, for me, that I have not heard a turntable that reaches the level of the select app. I'm passionate about music and art. And um, for me, the technical uh, part behind audio is just the vehicle of reproducing the art. It's not just, um, it's like driving a car. I don't have to understand all the technology, how suspension and an engine works, but I can appreciate the way it drives. And my audio file system is set up with a full MSB system. Um, the MSB monoblocks, the select tag, wired with synergistic research cables. Uh, we have the Tidal uh, loudspeakers and it's a magic setup. It, it, I play music and I get it immediately pulled into the music. I, I enjoy the emotions from the artist, the dynamics. And that's for me what I, why I love this job and why my job is my passion. Ripping software is crucial if you have your own CD library. I have about a thousand CDs, I have 600 albums in vinyl, um, and I buy a lot of music online. When I'm putting my own music onto a hard drive, I have to be careful that when I'm ripping, that I'm ripping correctly and be perfect. The good thing is that with the MSB, I can check it because we have bit perfect playback. Um, so ripping software is important. Um, a cheap computer can reproduce uh, music or reproduce a digital signal and, and convert it. Um, but I think you just need a proper digital output and once you get it into an MSB DAC, that, that's where the magic happens. Transports, I hope they will stay uh, for a while. Um, but if I look at the evolution of uh, streaming services like Tidal, Spotify, and I look at what Rune is capable to, to do, it's, I think that's an evolution where in a couple of years, um, I may be using most of the time Tidal streaming because the way it sounds in my system is just extra. It's, it's exceptional. It's fantastic. 
So I have access to more CDs than I ever can buy or store in my, my home. And um, it, it sounds almost the same right now as when I use the UMP transport from MSP. It's close, it's not there yet. There's still some things that uh, work, but then with the new formats like MQA, where you have a, an improved playback over a streaming service, I think that's where it's going to go. And I hope young people will pick up on that and listen to that difference in quality and appreciate it and take that as a step to go to a better audio system. I think with an MSB DAC, you are at the top of the field. You're, you're in pole position and you're leading your race. Um, the potential of MSB with the ladder DAX is that oh, we're sounding fantastic, but there is still potential for growth. If you have a, a chip that's made and you're using that chip, you can build the, the surroundings, the power supply, you can improve all little things there, but you cannot improve the performance of that chip. You can go further than the chip can go. And with the ladder deck, we still have an enormous room for growth. And that's where MSB is, a, is an exceptional uh, product. That's where we're leading the race.